Thebe is recognized. Thank you so much, Chairwoman, and thank you so much for our panelists for being here. I would like to submit for the record a written statement by Mayor Vince Williams of Union City, Georgia, who serves as the president of the National League of Cities. Without objection. We all know that the American Rescues Plan's local fiscal recovery fund, Union City, qualifies as, quote, a non-entitlement unit, un, unit of government, or uh, I think some would refer to as NEU which is generally a city or a town or a village of less than 50,000 residents. So Mayor Woodward, since you work closely with Mayor Williams, can you tell us what the recovery funds have meant to the nation's NEUs? Absolutely, again, thank you for the question. You talked about uh, Union City already, but let me share with you Cheney, Washington, a city right here in my own state. Uh, a city of just more than 12,000 residents. The city council approved a $50,000 grant to help with the rental assistance as the current eviction moratorium was extended and is set to expire at the end of October. Many families fall behind on rent nationally due to job loss and reduced hours and the SLFR SLFRF funds allow the community to ensure that residents who struggle to pay their rent would not lose their home. Um, in Henderson, North Carolina, the city has designated $1 million of its money um, from the America Rescue Plan to not to give to nonprofit organizations serving the Henderson area. $250,000 will be awarded to nonprofits each year over the next four years through an application process. And we know that a lot of our CBOs, community-based organizations and nonprofits are on the front line delivering the many services that are most needed during this time. No, thank you so much. I know um, uh, Mayor Ward was, um, I mean, while I was proud to obviously help authorize the historic relief effort, uh, I was concerned to see, you know, especially my NEUs uh, allocations would be first sent to the states who would then distribute the funds to our smaller cities. And so Dr. Leach, you know, why were the recovery funds dispersed in this way? Well, it's, it's just an administrative challenge for Treasury to deliver uh, funds to thousands of towns. Uh, this is the way that it works in the CDBG program, the Community Development Block Grant Program. So they had that, uh, that sort of structure to, to go to states and then out to these smaller places. Um, you know, I would say that, that states have, uh, I understand that they've distributed 95 plus percent of the funds to NEUs, um, uh, with some, with the exceptions just being because for a variety of reasons, the little town are, isn't able to respond. They may have been annexed. The town officials may be understaffed or facing other challenges. Sure, you know, and I know that you know this makes sense. But I also think there should have been a limit to how many extensions uh, states could request to provide small cities with their rightful allocations. For example, you know, Treasury documents show that the state of Michigan requested at least eight extensions, which really impacted. Uh, again, my local communities that really were the ones who lacked the most capacity to crush this virus. And I know the American Rescue Plan was a historic endeavor to provide relief to our local governments. Unfortunately, when the critical allocations were delayed, it is our small town residents who suffer the most. You know, most of my constituents in Romulus City, Ecorse, Garden City, Wayne, Inkster, they really deserved us to move with that urgency. So I also want to touch, you know, base on the flexibility of the funds. You know, the, uh, our, the minority witness um, has previously, see, you know, claimed that the recovery funds have, quote, so many strings attached as Congress limit how state and local governments would, you know, could allocate the aid in various ways. But Dr. Lynchman, would you call the ways the funds can be spent, quote, limited? No, I, I wouldn't characterize the funding as, have, have, as being particularly limited or having a lot of strings. It's, it's really quite flexible. And Treasury's guidance has made it even more so. Um, you know, anything that counts under the revenue loss provision can be used for uh, government services. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use the funds to address the pandemic and its negative economic effects, uh, defined in a way that gives governments room to really evaluate the circumstances in their local environment and uh, do what's best. Uh, and the final rule, the uh, Treasury has has uh, has uh, set up the uh, the rule so that. Um, when funds are targeted to a lower income communities or communities that have been particularly hit hard, uh, that, uh, that uh, recipients have a wide range of options uh, of use in those areas. Yeah, thank you. You know, Mayor Woodward, have you found that 
there aren't enough eligible uses that warrant funding in Tacoma, or has your experience been that there isn't enough funding to meet all that your city's eligible demands? Definitely not. Um, as, as, as I talk to mayors across the country and I've heard the conversation today about their right. surplus, I don't know anybody talking about they have extra money. We are still struggling to provide all of the services that are needed coming out of this pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah, it takes time. So thank you again, Chairwoman, for this hearing and I yield.